Back at WWDC 2019, Apple announced HomeKit would get a feature that promised to improve security on its smart home platform via Wi-Fi routers. This feature called HomeKit Secure Router works by applying firewall rules to HomeKit accessories connected either via Wi-Fi or the router's ethernet ports. During this announcement, Apple said that several router brands would roll out HomeKit Secure Router support, including Linksys and Aero. However, it was not until 2020 that we saw major adoption of this feature. So as of September 2020, HomeKit Secure Router support has been available for the VLOP whole ohm Wi-Fi mesh. So when support arrived back then, Lynx has sent me over the VLOP router three pack, which is the AC6600. And I've been using this setup for a few months now in my home kit setup in my home. In this walkthrough stroke review, I want to share the setup process, explain what HomeKit enabled routers offers, along with my thoughts on what this feature could offer in the future. Now, before we get started and you're new to this channel, HomeKit Authority, it'd be really appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. And if you think about buying one of these, there is affiliate links in the description below that help this channel out at no extra cost to you. And a quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Quidnode. Quidnode Hosting offer a variety of hosting services powered by enterprise grade hardware and backed by a team of experts based in the US and UK with a range of services from website hosting, game servers, virtual servers and dedicated services at wallet friendly prices. Visit quidnode.com and use discount code AKA for 25% off your first order. So starting with Setup, despite this device offering so much functionality and features, this has been one of the easiest devices I've set up. The entire setup relies on an iOS app to walk you through the process, providing you clear, easy to follow instructions. I placed the main VLOP mode in my living room near my modem and completed the initial setup. Once I then had everything set up on the main node, I then placed the remaining two nodes in my studio and one in the dining room. And with the help of the app to advise on location suitability, I was able to place this within my home and it gave you some advice on where to place it. Although the initial setup was easy and it only took about 15 minutes, I then had to migrate my entire HomeKit setup to the new Wi-Fi network. But luckily for me, most of my devices connect using manufacturer bridges via ethernet. But for the accessories connected via Wi-Fi, I needed to remove them from my existing Wi-Fi and then add them back into HomeKit, which included my HomeKit hubs, such as my HomePod and Apple TVs. Now moving on to the HomeKit setup side of things. Once I confirmed everything was configured properly with the VLOP setup and connected all my devices, the next step was add the VLOP routers to HomeKit via the OMAP. Setup starts within the Linksys app by tapping the button in the upper left corner and then scrolling down to find an option called Apple Home Integration. This option starts the process for HomeKit integration with an alert confirming that you want to begin setup. Then you'll be prompted to allow access to your HomeKit data, which is important for everything to work correctly. The next part of the setup is like adding any other HomeKit accessory to your setup other than scanning the HomeKit code, which you don't do in this instance. The process will take you through adding each router, which involves naming the router and adding to the room you've placed it in. When first setting up each device, it uses a naming convention, Linksys, and a series of numbers. So it may be a little difficult to identify which one is which. So there's a button in the setup UI to identify it, which flashes the light on top of the router. Then once you've all done that, you'll be asked to turn on the HomeKit accessory security. Once this is all done, it's all set up within HomeKit. So once you've got everything set up and HomeKit router support has been enabled, it's all pretty much automatic and you don't have to do anything else if you don't want to do so. You will not see anything different in the main sections of the OMAP and you will not see the routers listed in the rooms you've assigned them which is the same you would find with HomeKit Bridges. But I'm assuming you're here to find out more about this feature. So let's dig a little bit deeper into the inner workings and custom settings. To access these settings, you need to jump into the Ohm app and tap the Ohm icon on the main menu in the top left corner. Then navigate to Home Settings, which you'll find at the bottom after all the rooms. This then opens up settings and options for your HomeKit Home 
and towards the bottom, you'll find a menu for Wi-Fi networks and routers. Tapping on the menu lists several options. First, you can see all your routers you've added and tapping each router will list all the data associated with that router, along with information like serial number and those kinds of things. You also get a toggle to enable and disable HomeKit accessory security. This effectively turns this feature on and off. Then finally, you get a list of HomeKit accessories that are connected to your network via the VLOC routers, either via Wi-Fi or Ethernet. As previously mentioned, when you first enable HomeKit secure router support, it's set to automatic, but you can individually set the rule for each HomeKit accessory connected to the routers. First of all, you've got restricted to home. This provides the highest level of security for the devices. Devices set to restrict to home can still connect to your HomeKit hub on your local network, but because they cannot communicate outside your network and they won't be able to do things like update firmware. If you do run multiple smart home platforms like Google or Alexa, then these devices cannot communicate with them either. Then you have automatic, which is the default setting for any accessory connected. This setting allows internet connections and connections to the devices that have been identified by the device manufacturer. It describes these connections in the OMAP, provide initial transparency about which services will connect. However, it's worth noting that not all makers provide this information. Then you've got no restriction, which allows any connection to the internet or local device. Now it's all about finding the right balance. And whilst most users will turn on HomeKit Secure Router and just leave it in automatic mode, users that want to use Restrict to Home to restrict HomeKit devices to access the internet should ensure that devices aren't sharing information to destinations outside your network without your knowledge. When I experimented with Restrict to Home, setting for this review, I found it can affect device performance outside of the HomeKit services. So for instance, it would affect devices that require server-side processing of data, for instance, like the UFA security cameras. These cameras require an active internet connection for functions like motion detection in the UFA security app to work. But to be clear, this setting works as designed and it does not affect the performance within HomeKit. So your cameras will still function with the HomeKit. Any services that sit with that manufacturer's app, they will not work and it will just all work in HomeKit. Plus, if it's a HomeKit camera, you still have HomeKit secure video and it all works and it's all enabled and it works as expected. You also may want to use the restrictor home for older HomeKit devices that do not receive support anymore. After all, they will not receive firmware updates, which could also mean they're more vulnerable to exploits. In my testing, I kept most of my devices in automatic mode and moved a few to restrict to home that I wanted to limit access to the internet. During this time, I've not run into any issues with performance for devices in HomeKit. All the functions work as we expected for within HomeKit, like motion triggers, automations, and HomeKit secure video. I've also not come across any issues with adding devices when HomeKit secure router support has been enabled. Now, just a note on HomeKit bridges. If you're using HomeKit accessories that connect with a HomeKit bridge, such as Philips U, then you do not need to go through each individual device to set the settings which would be time consuming with something like you. If like me, you have about 35 lights in your home. However, this could be an issue with brands like Ufi, again, that have a central hub for its cameras. So if you want to restrict to home one particular camera, say one that's inside, then this would not be possible and it would restrict all cameras because it just restricts the primary device that's set up and exposed to HomeKit. So just bear that in mind when planning any deployment of HomeKit router support in your setup. Now moving on to the performance, the, the Linksys VLOP has a tri-band Wi-Fi network built in with two 5 gigahertz networks and one 2.4 gigahertz networks. There's no way to choose which network to join as Linksys uses band steering to direct devices the most appropriate band. The VLOP system chooses based on signal strength and capability of the device it needs to use. Just to be clear, this is my first mesh Wi-Fi router and it would be unfair for me to compare it to performance to similar systems. But before I was sent this, I'd been using an ISP provided router and I would experience the dreaded no response with HomeKit accessories. These devices would often be in places that I'd identify the Wi-Fi dead spots or areas of my own that further away from the router. However, with the VLOP router, it's been like night and day. And with the first noticeable difference being the elimination of no response for devices. Not only this, the VLOP system reaches areas of my home that the SkyQ system didn't. For instance, it could reach the very bottom of my garden 
and the back of my garage with solid Wi-Fi performance. I've also seen a notable difference in my gaming with my Xbox. Plus when multiple people are at home using Wi-Fi for streaming and gaming, the VLOP handles it well, whereas my previous setup would struggle with a house full of five people connected with multiple devices. Now, whilst the current implementation of HomeKit Secure Router support only includes support for HomeKit accessories connected via Wi-Fi or the Ethernet, I have Thread and Bluetooth for HomeKit accessories in my home that are connected via HomeKit hubs such as HomePod. Apple does not include these types of devices in the current implementation, so it would be nice to see Apple expand support to these devices in the future. After all, they connect to hardware that is controlled and designed and manufactured by Apple, so I can't see any particular reason why they wouldn't do this. So my final thoughts, having spent a few months testing this setup and this system along with HomeKit router support for the review, it has impressed me with the Wi-Fi coverage and performance especially for HomeKit devices. While it's hard to say that the dreaded no response has been 100% eliminated from my setup, as it can be for several reasons. However, based on my experience in troubleshooting in the past, poor Wi-Fi is one of the key reasons that you do get the dreaded no response. But I feel by introducing the VLOP mesh router into my HomeKit setup, devices have been a lot more stable. In HomeKit. I also like for the average user it's simple to set up and leaving it in automatic mode will provide a decent level of protection for most people. But if you do have concerns over HomeKit devices phoning home or that need server-side cloud processing for features outside of HomeKit and you don't want to expose these devices to the manufacturer's cloud, with only a few clicks you can limit access outside of your network. This will also give people peace of mind that by manufacturer's devices that come with no track record on privacy. At the beginning of this review, I said Lynx has sent the VLOP mesh system for this review and for all my testing. However, I will be packing it back up and shipping it back to them. But because of the performance and peace of mind this device has brought me, I've actually gone out and purchased my own via Amazon for my HomeKit setup. So if you are looking for a solid mesh router that comes with HomeKit secure router support, then the Linksys setup is a great system and a brilliant choice. So that's a wrap on this review stroke walkthrough video. Hopefully you found it interesting. If you have, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. If you do have any outstanding questions and leave it in the comment section below and I will get back to you. Also, if it has helped you out and you do end up buying one of these, it'd be appreciated if you use the affiliate links as it helps this channel out at no extra cost to you. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel as that is greatly appreciated. And we've got more HomeKit videos coming out and there's plenty on the channel for you to check out. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.